Well, here it is, shortest paths. If there was a capstone moment in 61B, I think this is it. We get a lot of ideas put together, all in one big package. We're many levels deep of abstraction. There's so much object-oriented programming stuff going on, and it's going to be really hard. Uh, maybe not a thing you wanted to hear at this moment, but I think that uh, this will be that classic, once, once the hemorrhaging has ceased uh, and the battlefield is cleared, I will feel like I have conquered, okay? So, let's get into it. Um, well, the basic idea here is that we want to implement A star, the algorithm, okay? So definitely job one for this part of the assignment is make sure that if you, uh, before you even start implementing this thing, you need to really get what A star is, okay? Uh, so I've created this little graph here that I'd like you to think about. Uh, uh, in particular, if four is the source and three is the destination, and these are the distances between adjacent vertices, and these are the estimates that we have for how far away three is, uh, I'd like you to figure out what order the vertices are in. Okay, so try that first. Now I'll wait as a robot and we'll go through it. So hopefully looking at this graph and take into account these numbers, and if you haven't done that, pause again, uh, you have found that the answer is 4253. So we want to visit the source first, clearly. Um, and then from there, we could either go here, here, or here. Well, this one's obviously, even though this is our destination, uh, it's far away if we go directly. Uh, this one's close. Uh, but as it happens, if we take into account these distance estimates, the overall distance to three, uh, this is our best. And we'll see that in some more detail um, in a bit. Okay, so that's the intuitive picture. Um, now, I want to discuss things in terms of our data structures into Java reference manual. How does A star work? Uh, well, if we look at A star, it says that uh, A star is just Dijkstra's algorithm, uh, but what we need to do is modify it slightly. One thing we need to do uh, is if we ever see the thing we're looking for, quit. Okay, how can I do that? Well, maybe it's that Boolean that visit returns. Hint, hint. Uh, and then the other thing uh, is we need to modify our collection of vertices a little bit, where we're going to say we want to have a priority queue of vertices that's ordered by the distance plus uh, our guess as to how far away something is. Okay, well, what's Dijkstra's algorithm? Well, we go back to the Dijkstra section, the little subsection before, and we find, okay, Dijkstra's algorithm is just our general schema, the thing we did for traversal, you know, with the, the generic code, but now our collection, instead of it being like a queue or a, a stack of something or other, uh, it's going to be a priority queue of vertices that's ordered by our distances uh, plus our heuristics, since we're doing A star. Uh, and our initial collection is going to be every vertex. Okay. So what that means in, in A star terms is that when we begin the algorithm, we start all of the vertices off in a priority queue, every single vertex in the whole graph. And four in this case is going to be the one up top or the minimum one uh, because its distance is zero uh, plus the estimate to the destination 102. So this one, I guess you can think of has priority 102, uh, whereas all of these have infinite priority if we look carefully at the DSIJ. Um, so we don't really care what order these are in. We just care that this one's up top. So this will be the first to get removed from the fringe, just like we always do. Okay, so I guess just again, since we're talking through this code, um, we are, let's see, here we go. Um, so we have our fringe, while it's not empty, we do some stuff. Okay, so in this case, we're gonna visit this vertex. So we pull it out of the fringe and we visit it. Uh, and then for every edge coming out of this thing here and here, um, we're going to, um, well, in this case, it's gonna be a little silly because we're not gonna add anything. Everything's already there. Um, so instead the visiting process, all right, if we look back at Dijkstra's algorithm, uh, when we visit an, a vertex, uh, we have the feature that, hold on, sorry, blah, blah, blah. Uh, visit actually has this interesting side effect that it sets distances and reorders the fringe as needed, okay? Uh, so in other words, these two vertices, when we visit them, uh, we have to adjust the information. We have to note that in fact, two is now the closest thing uh, and then these are not the closest, okay? Uh, and again, since it's a priority queue of vertices, we don't really care. I mean, we could store it as an ordered list, whatever, but I'm I'm trying to be a little more abstract here to keep your options open. Um, these ones are all just not the top, okay? Uh, so three and six, these are still infinitely far away uh, because we don't, oh, you know what? Actually, I'm wrong. Let's fix that. Hmm. 
you, by the way, have, uh, wait, 102. <laughs> okay, four marked as five, two, and three's predecessor. Okay, so we make a note that these are the current bests. Okay, uh, and this guy has weight 102. Sorry. Uh, okay, so we have all of these guys as possible choices. These ones are further along, and we have three predecessors marked. Okay, and to be someone's predecessor just means, uh, as far as we know, we know right now the best way to get to two is from four, the best way to get to three is from four, and the best way to get to five is from four. Okay, so continuing along, uh, the next thing that you removes is two. Um, and now, because uh, two, the total distance from four to two to three is less than 102, um, we can now say that this is the new predecessor, right? Um, and then we adjust the weights again as follows. And I guess one thing I should be very clear about here that I don't think I have been, is when I say the weight up here, uh, the weight of the vertex is only it, the distance to it. This does not include the estimate. And we can see that, again, if we want to draw close parallels with our reference material, uh, the distance here, so we have the distance plus h, right? So I'm, the weight is the distance, right? And then we also have this. Uh, so at that point, we have our priority queue where five is the smallest thing, and these ones are not the smallest. And two, in this case, is now marked as three's predecessor, which I've shaded in red. Okay. Uh, so that's that. Okay, um, hopefully the big picture makes sense. Now what that means is that you're going to have to build code, and we're gonna look at it in a little bit, what the code looks like, um, that uses your existing traversal class to do this, right? Uh, and this is where the super cool object-oriented, like, oh my God, crazy 61B thing happens, where you've already kind of written A star you just need to write the appropriate overwritings of, of its methods so that you get this. Or to say that much more uh, eloquently than I just did, uh, you are going to create a class shortest paths. It will implement A star. How will it do it? Well, it's going to do it by taking a class you already have, an abstract traversal that traverses any old graph in the universe, and Q, a thing built into Java, perhaps the simplest idea around, right? You're gonna build your own special queue that's aware of distances, that's able to keep track of the closest thing somehow. So you'll make your own queue, and then you'll make your own traversal, and you'll feed that queue to that traversal, remembering, of course, that traversals need uh, queues. And you'll override the appropriate methods in traversal, right? Just like you built depth-first traversal, which extended traversal, now you're going to extend it in some other way, where you'll have a new special semantics for visit uh, and for process successor, and maybe other stuff if you want it. Uh, and uh, it's like, I don't know, kind of magical and amazing that out of that, you get this totally different algorithm A star. So we get this, uh, what I would say is a very high level and, and, and pretty sophisticated uh, situation for code reuse. So again, it'll be tricky, but I think you'll really appreciate it once you build it. A very natural place for you to start is to write some tests for this. That is, uh, I'm gonna run this right here and I'm gonna make sure it works. And the nice thing is, of course, we're giving you the staff graph package so you can make sure that it works. So in this particular case, I think this is a really good idea so you understand what it's supposed to do. Now, spoiler alert, I'm gonna show you a little bit of like a pseudocode of what a test might look like for this. Uh, and uh, here it is, let's see, pseudocode, yes. Um, so I have some testing class, shortest paths testing. Um, and what I need to do in order to obey the simple shortest paths um, API or, or to use it, uh, is I'm supposed to extend symbol shortest paths and provide a method that gives out weights and a method that gives out an estimated distance to each vertex or to, to the target vertex. So I can set up these methods here and it'll tell me some, some estimated distances. Uh, and you can hard code those however you want. Uh, and then whenever you create one of these video graph paths objects, well, of course it needs to know about some graph you wanna search like this one. Uh, as well as the source and the destination. Uh, and that will be what a simple shortest paths object looks like roughly. And so a test might look something like, okay, I need to generate the graph from the video. So some code that just puts all the arrows in here. Uh, but of course it's not going to include these numbers because that's not part of the graph class. Uh, all of these numbers here uh, are gonna live uh, in these methods. So you generate a video graph uh, and then you run through and uh, once you've created this video graph paths object, you set paths uh, and then finally I can test stuff inside the video graphs path. So 
So just to give you a rough idea of how that feels. Now, what exactly should you test? Well, uh, I would start by looking only at simple shortest paths. And I guess this is as good a time as any uh, to mention how I think one might approach this problem. So simple shortest paths is should take you no time at all. Uh, it is as simple as it appears once you understand it. Literally, all it does is let you uh, associate vertices with weights and get back that weight uh, and associate uh, some integer with some other integer. That is, I want to say uh, that u is v's predecessor uh, and I want to be able to retrieve that. That's all. So it's real simple. Yes, it's just a couple of maps or something like that. Um, so I would start by making sure that works. That is, you know, make sure that each of these methods work. Um, and then once you get a little more sophisticated, uh, you can start writing tests like uh, verify that when I create a shortest path object that the source is actually four and the destination is actually uh, being generated as three. Um, you can also verify, for example, that after you run it, that the output path uh, from the source to the destination is four, two, three. You can verify, for example, that five is visited, that six is not visited, and so forth. And again, you can run these tests on the staff package to make sure your test works, uh, or you can submit it uh, as project three, basics three. Once you've written those tests and you feel like they're working and you've gotten a sense they're working by one, running them on the staff package and seeing that things work, uh, and two, um, submitting it as project three basics three and seeing that it works, uh, then you can proceed and start writing uh, shortest paths itself, all right? Um, so basically once you've done the testing, that means you understand how it works. Now it's time to write the thing. So shortest paths, um, we know from, so 12.3.7 is going to be your primary reference. And in it, you'll see, okay, well, what is A star? Well, it's just a tweak on Dijkstra. 12.36 uh, says, okay, well, this is Dijkstra. Uh, well, that's just a special case of traversal, all right? So I'll just say up front that the trickiest part and the thing that's going to be in some sense a culmination of everything we've learned about object-oriented programming uh, is that you are going to somehow need to create a Q data structure. Why a Q? Well, because that's what traversals requires as a fringe, right? So you have to create some data structure that implements the Q interface and which also has this property that it is a priority Q of vertices ordered by distance values with smaller distances having higher priorities. That was a lot of air quotes. Um, so it's going to seem hard at first, but I think you'll really like it uh, once you figure out what's going on. Uh, okay, so as far as building a distance Q goes, you are going to need to give traversal, that class you wrote before, a distance Q because that's going to be the fringe your distance queue is going to need to implement the queue interface. Why? Because it is a queue such that uh, the, the thing that is closest is going to be remove by remove. So if I call remove at, say, this point in the algorithm, I should get five back. Uh, and you also need to make sure that whenever you uh, use the other queue methods, like add all and add, that it doesn't somehow break remove. But basically, the main piece of functionality you need to retain is remove has to work. Another thing is that when we process a successor, that is, when we look at an edge and decide you are better right, than the current best edge I know about, once, once I, um, when I process an edge and decide it's a good edge, right, we, we incorporate it. We say it's the new best. We need some way to tell the distance queue about the new distance updates. So as I'm walking through each edge, uh, basically the, the basic picture there is when I process an edge, finally clicked on one, uh, what that means is, you know, maybe some other graph. As soon as I process this edge, six would become the new boss of the priority queue. So you're going to have to write code that does that in some sense. Okay? So how do you do that? Well, there's a few approaches, right? You need to implement the queue interface. I mean, you could do it completely from scratch, but I think that'll be a little silly, right? Doing everything totally from scratch. So if we look back at lecture 17, uh, if you want to click here, you can get a reminder. There's basically three... Uh, ways we could do this. Uh, we could extend it, that is, uh, take an existing class that already implements Q and extend it. Uh, we could instead delegate to some other class. And if you don't know what I mean right now, click on this link and go check it out. Uh, or we could adapt, uh, we could adapt a class. And I'm not going to say anything about that here. So I'm going to say, I think the extension option is probably the best, or I mean, like the most natural thing for you to do. Uh, but Paul used delegation in his solution, so it might be worth trying out. So I expect this challenge right here. It's going to seem kind of hazy. I expect it's going to be hard. Uh, so I want you guys to talk amongst yourselves, seek help. Um, 
it's not weird if you have false starts or if you feel a little lost, right? I think this will be very challenging, all right? Getting a handle on it. I mean, for some of you who are really on top of your game, it, it might not be so bad, but I anticipate that for quite a lot of you, it's gonna seem a little a little hazy and mysterious, right? We're, oh, I have, this is already still open. So this is this idea in education. There's things you can do alone and there's things you can do with guidance. So we're pushing way out into the zone of proximal development as far as object-oriented uh, programming goes, okay? So just be aware. It'll be a little scary. Okay, so um, if you decide to go the extension route, that is, take an existing class, say, I don't know, array list or whatever, extend array list, extend priority queue, extend queue, extend tree set, whatever. Um, if you choose to make your fringe data structure by extending, then that means you need to make sure that the remove method of your extended class always gives the smallest thing in the fringe, okay? Uh, and by, by small, I mean, uh, or I guess we'll say smallness of a vertex is given by its weight plus its estimated distance, okay? So somehow your data structures need to, gonna, need to, it's going to need to be aware of these pieces of information so that it can remove properly, uh, okay? So uh, what I would do then is, since you're going to be extending, you have to pick something that's already a queue. So you can click this link and see all of them. Um, you might, and this is just gonna be a very hazy thing for now, uh, you might consider at some point creating a class which implements comparator. And I'll say no more about that because I wanna give you guys some time to try and explore that, all right? So uh, that's the extension idea. Now, if you delegate by contrast, uh, if you find yourself, uh, so if you instead decide I'm going to make my own thing from scratch that implements Q, right? That is class X implements Q. Um, then you're going to need to provide all the methods required by the Q interface and also its super interface, the collections interface. Uh, so if you click here, you can see all the Q methods that exist. And if you click here, you can see all the collections methods. Now you'll see there's a few dozen, probably don't want to do that. Uh, and so the nice thing is that there's already an abstract Q class that does most of the work for you. The only thing you have to do is provide these five methods, okay? So you'll start to implement these and why these ones? Well, if you look through this documentation for a while, you'll figure out these are the five you need. Um, and uh, the nice thing is, since you are delegating the work to say an array list or a priority queue or a queue or a tree set or a hash set or whatever, um, it's going to be relatively straightforward to write these things once you understand what they're supposed to be. Uh, and likewise, as with the uh, idea of extension, uh, I'm just going to throw out the word comparator again so that you might find it useful. I mean, it's not strictly necessary that you use the comparator interface, but I think if you do, you'll have this nice moment where you have this like aha of object-oriented programming that I think will be pretty cool but hard to reach. Okay, so up to you. Either one you want to do uh, seems very reasonable. Uh, and I suppose you could also completely implement something totally from scratch, though um, that will probably be a lot more work. There's actually a secret third option, uh, which is that you could say, you know what? I don't actually want to write my code in terms of traversal, right? Like I can, I have a sense of what A star is supposed to do, uh, and I don't want to have to try and manipulate all this object-oriented programming stuff. I don't want to write my own visit method and process successors and whatever else. You know what? I just, I'm going to do it from scratch. Um, you know, the good news is if you do that, it's straightforward. Like, you'll know exactly what you're supposed to do as you go. Uh, but the bad thing is you're going to have to re-implement all that traversal code you already did. I think it'll be more work. But the most uh, significant thing is you won't get to go out to this, like, this strange world of object-oriented programming where you really get to see uh, where it shines and where you can reuse code in these really interesting ways that you would not have thought of uh, before. So um, I suppose this is technically okay um, if you if you do this, but I, I think you'll have more fun <laughs> uh, if you try the, the intended way. Uh, and so I'll have some debugging tips that I'm going to throw out here uh, as they go. These are the ones I thought of so far uh, based on my own uh, bugs building things. And uh, yeah, I think that's it for now. So um, good luck. I expect this will be quite challenging. And uh, you know, it's the last weekend we're going to steal from you, I guess. Uh, okay, well, see you around. And there'll be one more video about the clients coming after this.